Slick Rick Harris wants a rundown on the offensive line for 2020. How many question marks are there? How much is is firmly in place in regards to who's going to be up front? I don't think there are many question marks. Harry Miller at left guard, and most likely. Right yeah. uh, Nicholas Petit Frere at right tackle, battling with Paris Johnson and Dewan Jones. But I think Petit Frere is the the favorite there. Wyatt Davis is an All American at right guard. Josh Myers is an All American at center. There, Munford is right up there with Taylor Decker, who was a first rounder back in 2016 at left tackle. I think I think Ohio State's second team offensive line would be one of the five best in the Big Ten. I think the biggest question is Thayer's back. Um, you know, mm-hmm. just will he be able to hold up for 12, 14, 15 games? That's I think I think that's gonna be maybe the biggest concern there. I agree that Harry Miller slides into that guard position. I think that uh the tackle, the right tackle position, it will be up in the air a little bit. I think that uh, MPF probably ends up winning it out. That's just based on nothing at this point. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but Thayer's back is probably the biggest concern that I would have if I, you know, if I were looking at this from a rooting standpoint. I think the backups, if you were thinking about it, Harry Miller would slide over and play center if it had to happen, and then somebody, Matthew Jones, would probably play guard. I'd say he's the third guard. Mm-hmm. Gavin Cup would be in that mix as well. Uh, not sure. Is Enik Mavamahi, is he uh, – I think he lines up a guard as well. Yeah, yeah he's a guard. I, th- I think that he'd be in that mix for that third guard position too. They really yeah. liked him and played him a lot toward the end. And then the tackle position, I think Paris Johnson is going to make uh, a run at Nicholas petit Ferrer. But I agree with you, the experience – should be what Nicholas Petit Ferrer uh, is able to hang his hat on, and then next year Johnson would move right in, in place of Munford at the other uh, tackle position. Dewan Jones, uh, whatever his weight is, I think it was three seventy or thereabouts when he got there, and might be in the three fifty three sixty range. Hard to say. Probably changes on a daily basis by ten pounds either direction, depending on working out or what he had to eat, but. Um, uh, I think uh, he's an intriguing guy as well who could be in that mix. And uh, so I feel very good. I would say this offensive line with three starters coming back, I feel very good about it. And I think even if they had an injury or something happened to one guy out of the group, they would be properly positioned to handle whatever came their way. I don't think you want to get too deep into the depth but I think we've given you a contingency plan at uh, all five spots that, uh, you know, it may not be, okay, well, who's the number two guy there? It could be whoever the number two guy is on the other side shifts over and takes over the one spot on the, on that other side. So, um, you know, that's kind of how I view it as a, as a pecking order or a hierarchy of how they are within each individual position. But I think it's a strong, eight or nine man top rotation. And then you go from there and you build out that depth. And the great thing about last year was they had so many blowouts that uh, backups got to play 30% of the snaps in a lot of the games and maybe even more in some of the games. So I think you have to be excited about that. All right, Buckeye fans. uh, We've got a ton of Ohio State uh, kind of program slash team analysis coming your way. I'd love to get uh, maybe the eyebrow raise or the thoughts from these guys as I run down some of these involving all college football, but Ohio State in particular. So we know about the 10-year war, Bo Woody. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to look at the Ohio State-Michigan 15-year bloodbath is what it's been over the last 15 years. Put a lot of metrics to that involving recruiting, NFL draft selections, winning in the game, but also beyond that. Why Michigan was the 2018 favorite versus Ohio State, I think there's a strong justification for that. We're going to look at a series in which we look at when they were down, meaning we look at the elites of college football and the last period in which they were down. It's interesting to look at Ohio State football, knowing that they haven't had back-to-back losing seasons, I believe going back to the 1920s. Uh, I'm defining down as if you're an elite program, you compete for national championships, but that's a pretty lofty status. Uh, I'm looking at being down as as not being in competition for your conference championship, meaning seriously. And, and, and I think most Ohio state football fans, you, you, uh, I'll get your take on this would think of the 
post Earl Bruce final season, 1987 through when Cooper got it rolling 92, 93 as being a down period, probably the last one. And if you, and if you have one season down, if you're humming along at 10, 11 wins and you do one, seven and five, then you're back up. I don't consider that being down. It's got to be a three to four year, but even during that time, uh, as you guys well know, in 1989 and 90, Ohio State was playing for the Big Ten Championship on the final weekend of the season against Michigan. Even though that was a down time, they still had uh, two consecutive seasons playing for the Big Ten Championship on the final day against Michigan. So that's an interesting one. Bragging rights, Clemson versus Ohio State. This is kind of a new or contrived rivalry in college football, and Clemson has the obvious bragging rights. But Not I'll, much of a rivalry. Well, we'll look at the other side as well, Steve. Of course, the Buckeye fans, <laughs> of course, have their bragging rights, and it's pretty much in every other metric that could be measured. But 4-0 and is the obvious one. Um, and then we look at a lot of replays in regards to who should have won national championships or what the national championship race would have looked like in the BCS era versus the poll era and now the playoff era. 1983's in question, 84's in question, 1990 when you take a fifth down to win a national championship. That doesn't quite seem uh, too kosher. Uh, who's Ohio State's biggest threat over the next five to ten years? Uh, Ohio State. North, it's possibly east, or it's probably right there in Columbus. Uh, Clemson's yeah. biggest threat in a lot of other college football. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's not Jim Harbaugh's coaching. It's his policies that uh, if anyone would take to. All right. Great stuff, as always, from Kevin Noon from uh, Buckeye Grove, Tony Gerdeman from the Ozone, and Steve Hellwagon.